All right. Episode 709 of Let There Be Talk is here. It is Monday. Don't know the date. Don't care. Uh, <laughs> right? Who cares? It's always the same. It's always the same. Every day you get up, fuck, I got to pay bills and it's fucking another day. I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying, but hey, here you are tuning in. Thank you for tuning in. Hope you liked the episode last week with Eddie Bravo. What a fight talk. I don't, I don't do a lot of uh, fight talking, but uh, it's nice to talk to somebody that, uh, you know, is in that game, the UFC, judo, taekwondo, kung fu, uh, and jujitsu, all of that stuff. It's so funny. You think about that because we were talking about fighting and then uh, what was that? Jake Paul and and uh, Nate. Nate fought this weekend. Didn't see it, but I just saw the last two seconds. It's almost kind of like how uh, I watch everything these days. Just a quick clip on YouTube. Yep. OK, saw it. Moved on. <laughs> I did see that uh, crazy fight between um, the White Sox and the uh, Cleveland Guardians, which I had no idea. That's what they changed their name from, from the Indians to the Guardians. Terrible name. God, I don't understand how people have huge franchises or sports teams or anything, and they just can't figure out a good name. It's not that hard. I mean, you just kind of sit down, and you throw all the dumb names out right away, like the Guardians or the Bolts or, you know, any kind of obvious thing, uh, you know, the Stars. And, you know, and then you start to try to dig into, in your mind, logos and what's going to, you know, look great on a shirt and a jersey and all that. And then you kind of start mocking shit up but the cleveland guardians awful (laughs) but that was a pretty good fight baseball fights are notoriously um stupid you know the guy gets in the guy's face the other guy gets in the guy's face and then they clear the benches and they're pushing but not anymore man these guys are throwing blow like the guy on the uh ramirez is his name on the um on the guardians he just fucking clocked the dude on the white socks and and man that guy went down he got up he was like oh i'm going to kick your ass he was just fucking he was out of it anyway it is monday thank you for joining me i do have an important announcement before we go any further my uh my long great friend who passed away, Brody Stevens, uh, every year uh, put together, uh, I don't, um, the Brody Stevens uh, family and uh, team and and, and uh, people out there at the comedy store and everything put together a great uh, event celebrating Brody, raising money for... Uh, charity and stuff and i will be doing it it is on uh, august 18th at the comedy store and i miss brody every day all the time i hear his voice every night when i'm at the store i can i can feel brody's presence and uh it's uh, a great event so i hope you guys can make it out if you're in los angeles come out get a ticket right now it will sell out big lineup great lineup and uh i'm looking forward to being on that so come out and see and celebrate you got it and then there'll be like the brody stevens walk hold on let me get it for you here because uh you should be um i think it's festival of uh friendship brody stevens here it is brody's brody stevens uh the instagram is brody's festival of friendship. That's what I thought. And, you know, last year, I think it was last year, they uh, un- unveiled the uh, beautiful mural of, her, of him over there on um, 
in uh, Encino, or not Encino, Reseda. I don't know why I said Encino. It's all fucking hot out there. Anyway, 8-18-23. Come on out and join the Brody Stevens, Remembering Brody, on 818. That's the 818 was his, uh, his, his, he loved the valley. And uh, I've been living in the valley now for a few years, and I finally understand it, Brody. 818 till I die. 18th, lineup is Marin, Dane Cook, Jeff Garland, Sklar Brothers, Craig Gass, and myself. And uh, looking forward to seeing you guys out there. God, I love, I love Brody. I just uh, was watching part of his uh, special last night, Comedy Central special. <laughs> the guy was just so fucking great. God damn. Anyway, Festival of Friendship, and they're going to do a walk. Festival of Friendship, the 818 walk. It's a whole weekend that uh, my friend Tommy puts together. And uh, hope to see you guys out there. Never forget Brody, ever. Never will forget him. Always celebrating him. Even when I'm on stage, I'm up there and I'm bombing. I think about Brody. <laughs> looking at the crowds going negative energy arms crossed <laughs> god i fucking uh i bombed so hard on thursday at the store it'd been a long time since i bombed like this you know sometimes i'll have some kind of uh bad shows but they you know i can pull it pull it together somehow this one was just awful. It was at the store in the main room and doing comedy for 14 years now. I'm coming up on uh, my 15th year here. Uh, December 6th will be the fifth start of the 15th year. But um, it, 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 you know, I hadn't bombed like this in a while. And when you bomb like this, you realize, hey, man, I got to fucking get focused. I got too much shit on my plate. And uh, there was a few things going and you can make all kinds of excuses, but the bottom line is you fucking bomb. And, and it's like, I don't mind bombing in front of the people. It's just the, uh, my friends and the employees at the store. That's the more embarrassing thing. Cause you're just walking by them and they're just like, they just kind of turn away. Like, Ooh, that was a rough one. <laughs> And you'll see it once in a while at the store. You'll see somebody having a, a, a bad set and you're just kind of, uh, you're like, oh, shit, man. And you're wondering, is the crowd bad or is he, what's going on? But bottom line is too much stuff on the plate, not focused. I had killed a few nights ago there. I was up there a little bit fucking cocky, like, yeah. It was all kinds of things. There is this one spot at the comedy store and it doesn't really um come on at any certain time there's just a certain time because the way the comedy store works is it starts at nine uh in the original room and it starts at eight in the uh main room and there's usually about 10 or 12 comics and there's always that spot in the night where about you know, 50, 60 people will get up after a comic and be like, okay, that's it. We're going home. They, and somehow telepathically, the entire audience will just be like, they'll feel a rhythm of like, I'm ready. And people will get up and everybody will start leaving. So Rick Ingram's on and uh, Rick Ingram always kills, but I can tell he's got the gas pedal on. You know, the crowd might start to be getting a little faded. It was uh, Bobby Lee into um, Santino into Rick Ingram. So they've gotten some good fucking laughs and it's uh, getting into the night. I'm I'm comedian ninth on the lineup. And uh, Rick brings me up as I walk up. We always talk to each other. Uh, the comedians as you know, you pass the mic. I go, how is it? He goes, eh, they're all right. <laughs> as soon as I turn, 
a hundred, and I'm not kidding, at least a hundred people get up and are leaving because it's a sold out show in the main room, which holds about 400. So like a hundred people are getting up and they're all just kind of walking around like the show is over. They're talking in the showroom. They're trying to figure out how to get out of the showroom. They're like, what do you want to do now? I don't know. Maybe get some food. Just full on. Like the show is not going on. There is a fucking performer up there that has showered, has uh, maybe got a coffee and, and drove to the store, parked, came in, got ready to go on. And people are like, nah, we're not even going to give you a chance. We're out of here. Uh, we've been here for an hour and a half or two. So uh, I I have de dealt with that many times. It doesn't phase me anymore. When I first fucking started, there was a spot at the Laugh Factory at 1210. And as soon as you went on on that spot, no matter who you were, that place just emptied out because it was the start of the third show. They would roll the audience, meaning they would just start a third show on the audience, hoping they didn't notice. So they would stay in there because if they emptied the room and started again for the 12 o'clock show, there would be, uh, you know, maybe 40 people in there. But if you rolled it, you'd have a good 150 people. And that spot was fucking death and then re later on you realize oh it's not even me i don't really have a chance the side door would be opening where the people would be going out and you'd be hearing the valet parkers blue toyota blue toyota while you're trying to do your set you know white tesla white tesla and you're just on stage the door would open silver shadow silver shadow it's just Oh my God. And after a while you're like, and then if you got the spot right after that, it was fucking great. Cause the people were left and then you had, you know, maybe 75 people, but they were, they were engaged anyway. So walk on and there's like a hundred people leaving and I'm trying to just do a little bit of crowd work. Like, good, get out. I don't like doing comedy for people, you know, I'm just, and people are laughing and I'm, it's kind of a shit show of noise and movement. Whenever that happens, I always say something like, uh, you know what I need is a bunch of people moving around in the room. That's good for comedy. Something just to try to, you know, address the, the thing that's going on. There's nothing worse uh, that you could do than not address it. Just be up there like acting like a hundred people aren't leaving. Like, hey, what about walnuts? Walnuts are tasty, huh? They're good for your heart, I hear. But I don't like walnuts. <laughs> anyway, so they 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 kind of get out. The room kind of settles, and uh, I'm I'm working on new stuff, and. I quickly realized these people are faded. I'm looking at the people and they look like the Pearl Jam Jeremy video after Jeremy shoots the teacher or whatever. They're just like, they're just like kind of looking at me like, huh? There's people uh, yawning. Oh, oh, there are people talking, not even looking, just like, so, uh, I don't know. It's just, it's a shit show. Now, the classic mistake you make when you start to bomb is you start to speed up. You just, you just, you're like, I got to get out of this. The sets are 15 minutes. And this set, I kept looking up for the light. Like, when am I out of here? And I'm only five minutes in. I'm already looking at the light. Usually, a 15 comes on so quick. I don't even, I can't even believe it. I'm just like, oh God, 15 is already up. So I'm speeding up now. So uh, blah, 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 Nothing. Not getting nothing. Maybe one laugh over here. I'm sure he's laughing like this guy's bombing. You know, <laughs> I've got the fucking Jeremy video extras. I've got fucking talkers. 
I decide I'm going to switch into my A material. Fuck it. I'll, I'm going to stop working on shit. I'll switch into the A material. I'll get this. I switch into the A material. And the joke starts up. And I make the classic mistake of doing the joke twice. <laughs> the, the, the intro of the joke. Twice. I'm like, yeah, man. Uh, anybody got an MRI? 45 minutes. What the fuck is this? Yeah, I got an MRI recently. It was uh, 45. Anybody got an MRI? <laughs> oh, man. I listened to it. I was like, oh, oh, man. It was fucking awful. And it is so crazy how you uh, how it affects you. I was driving home. I live over Laurel Canyon. I was driving home. I could have easily just turned the wheel and just drove off the cliff. I mean, just like that. All the way home, I was like, man, what the fuck? What am I doing? What am I doing, man? My 15th year is coming up. Maybe I'll just call that my farewell and get out. Holy shit. I don't know what the fuck. Oh, God. All the way home, all night awake. I went home like Charlie Brown, just grabbed Gertie, like, you're the only one that understands me, Gertie. Just, oh, man, it was awful. And when that happens, there's two things. Right away, you want to get back on stage. But right away, you're also, you've lost a lot of your fucking, you know, your balls, man. It, your confidence is low. So you you got to do, I mean, I, the next day I'm going through notes. I'm listening to sets. And sure enough, man, there was a bunch of stuff I had not been doing that, uh, you know, all this shit on my plate, still dealing with all kinds of fucking grief and, and just life. And uh, I realized, yeah, man, I, uh, fuck, man, I got to wrangle it and be hyper-focused. And the next night, I was just fucking crushing and uh, it felt fucking good. I had three shows the next night, thank God. And I was, I, I, you know, I was just like, God, this has got to be, got to be on. I was back at the store the next night and somebody asked if I was nervous. I was like, no, I'm not nervous because I... I've done thousands and thousands of shows in the comedy store. It's just more, I hold the comedy store to such a high, high standard that I was, uh, I was like, I, I need to fucking rock it. I mean, I've seen people have bad sets and they're just fucking delusional. They'll get off and they'll be like, that wasn't bad. And I'm like, what? How do you even, how do you even fucking sleep? How are you still alive? You don't want to kill yourself, man. It's fucking, some people just have no, no fucking clue. They're just delusional. They're just like, yeah, you know, got some laughs. Now I did listen to the set. I listened to the set the next day. That's the hardest part of being a comic. I never listen to the sets when I kill ever. I record every show. I've got them all thousands and thousands Never really listen to when I kill unless something new uh, comes up in there. I go, oh, I got to I got to listen to what that was. But when I bomb, I fucking listen to that immediately. And I just take it, take it to the face, as Darnell, Willie, uh, Darnell uh, Rawlings would say, take it to the face. But I do. I listen to it and you just hear the mistakes right away. And also when you listen to it, you realize it wasn't as bad as you thought, but that doesn't fucking matter because what makes it bad is how you feel from doing it. You know, people could be like, somebody DM'd me actually the next day. It was like, great set last night. And I don't know if they were trying to be cool, like nice, like, ooh, that was bad. Or they just don't know good comedy or they're just a big fan and they just wanted to throw a, a DM at me. <laughs> oh man. I'm glad I didn't have uh friends in there. Cause the next night my buddy, old buddy, Mike Myers came down and I was glad I, I, uh, 
I'm glad he wasn't at that fucking show. Oh, God. That would have been, I've known this guy for, I don't know, 30 years or something, 25 years. Anyway, the bomb happened. It was bigger than the Oppenheimer bomb. That fucker was bigger than the atom bomb. <laughs> I was telling Kevin Christie about it, and he was just laughing. Charlie Brown with Gertie. He's like, you got to you gotta just talk about that. I talked about it on stage the next night, you know? Oh, anyway. Um, a lot of things to talk about today. Uh, Toyota came out with a new Land Cruiser. And I'm a, uh, I'm a big Toyota fan. I've had a couple Forerunners. I love the uh, Land Cruisers. The one from a couple of years ago that was like a real special one. Uh, Land Cruisers are always, you know, new or big money. They're like fucking eighty five thousand dollars for a Toyota, hundred grand for a Toyota. But they are fucking tanks, and they last forever. So they dropped a new one. They discontinued the uh, Land Cruiser and then came out with the new one. And uh, mixed feelings on it for me. I do love Land Cruisers. But this one looks a little bit kind of toyish. It, uh, I mean, the Lexus that came out a few weeks ago is kick-ass. But the Toyota, it's got a... A four-cylinder turbo, interesting motor choice. I'm not one of those guys that, uh, uh, you know, uh, fuck it. I mean, I talked about it before. I've test drove four four cylinders, you know. I got a Prius. It's slow as fuck. I know that. But I've tested four cylinders that fucking fly, you know. You know, back in the day, if the... Uh, if the uh, salesman recommended a four cylinder, he'd be like, "Get the fuck out of here! I want a, I want a ten cylinder." Um, but the four cylinders are rockets now. But I don't know if it's enough to pull and haul stuff uh, that a Land Cruiser would be doing. Now, ninety nine percent of the people buying the Land Cruiser are just going to be driving down to the uh, grocery store in it and loading it up with some uh, Trader Joe's, but. Uh, the people that do want to use it for the proper stuff, I don't know if the four-cylinder turbo is going to be enough. Um, the body just, I don't know. The body didn't really do it to me. It's kind of like a half FJ Cruiser. I loved the FJ Cruiser for years, and it kind of wore off on me. I, I, I truly believe still that the Defender 90 and the 110, the new Defender 90, are my favorite rides out in the last five years of the SUV. Although everyone I talked to for years now say that Land Rover, Land Cruiser, um, it, uh, you, you know, Land, Land, the Defenders, Range Rover, sorry. The Range Rovers are pieces of junk. They break down. And I do see a lot of them on the back of fucking flatbeds. And they still probably just don't have it together. It's interesting how a, an automobile company can be around in 2023 and cars still break down and they don't figure it out. I'll talk to a mechanic. They'll be like, yeah, stay away from the Mercedes 450 SL. Horrible electronics. And, you know, but that's years ago. But there would be these cars that have, you know, the Mini Cooper, awful transmission for like 10 years straight. They had class action suits on them on the transmissions. They all went out around 60, 70,000 miles. So that's pretty fucking weird how in this day and age of technology that, uh, People can't get it right because Toyota, I'll tell you what, these fuckers, uh, they could fight the Ukraine war. They could run over landmines and shit and still be cruising, man. They are just bulletproof. My four, uh, my forerunner was amazing. Uh, I had a Toyota Tercel. I talked about it where I'm just a Toyota guy. I came from my mom. She had the Corolla. All of these cars never 
never broke down. I mean, fucking never. That is incredible. So, you know, I would love to have a Defender 90, but I'd be furious if I spent 100000 even if I had the money. You, you, you got a bunch of cash and you buy a Defender 90 and it breaks down. And it's not, it, it, to me, it's just about like the inconvenience. There's nothing worse than when your car breaks down and you got to bring it somewhere and they're like, we're waiting for parts it's a supply issue. And then you got a rental car and your rental car is only good for like 15 days. The part's still fucking not in. It's just a nightmare. You buy a new car, you expect to not fuck with it for at least 100,000 miles, at least other than oil change and maybe some brake pads. So the reputation that Range Rover has is just mind boggling to me. And uh, I know John Mayer has one, and I'm, uh, I'd like to ask him if he's had any problems because I talked to my buddy Patrick Keeler, uh, drummer buddy, and he's had two Range Rovers, and he said straight up to me, he's like, "God, I love the Defender 90. I just, I just don't trust it. I've had nothing but nightmares with the uh, with Range Rover." So anyway, the Land Cruiser, it, I, it didn't really. Uh, it didn't really hit me. I do like the Lexus. Lexus is fucking fantastic. And Land and Toyota's fantastic. It's just the body is just a little, I don't know. A lot of people didn't like the engine selection. I, I haven't drove it yet. Like I said, four cylinders, turbo. They're fucking crazy. They got power. You know, these little motors just kill these days. And the new Prius is 200 horsepower. That's what I want. I want the new Prius. That's the age I am, people. 57, new Prius. The, the fucking, the freedom. You don't understand. The freedom of not fucking caring anymore about being cool. The freedom of that is unreal. And you get there one day in your life. And when you get there, you go, wow, I feel good. There's no more pressure. There's no, I, I, I actually, with me, there is a thing about being cool, but it, it, it really wasn't that with me. It was always like just cars I fucking loved when you're a car enthusiast. And I think it's more of that where you just go like, look, I can't afford the dream car. And if I could, I would be worried someone's going to fucking door ding it all the time. So the freedom of not worrying about where I park at that grocery store. And that comes from my dad, more reasons to uh, be mad at him. <laughs> my dad would get a car and he would, you know, he'd park way the fuck out in the parking lot and it'd be 114 in Fresno. And we would walk from his car all the way into the mall, just burning up getting melanoma so his car wouldn't get door dinged. And there I am 20 years, 25 years later in my car parking fucking at the back of the lot. And it's nothing worse. You park where no one's around. And then here comes that dick that parks right next to you. What the fuck are you doing, dude? Who are you? What is that malfunction in your brain where you're like, I'm parking next to him. I know he wants to be out here, not near any cars. I'm going to park next. Is it a fuck you? Or is it like, I don't want to be alone. I won't fuck with this car, but now I'll know where my car is. It's next to the 65 Mustang. I don't know what it is, but there's always that dick. You park way the fuck in no man's land and they park next to you. Oh, it's like, it's like that time I was at the movie theater and I sat down and it was empty and Matt Dillon sat next to me. <laughs> I think it was the radio hit. Was it radio hit movie? Mm, maybe not. One of those. Speaking of that, when is Radiohead going to put out a new fucking record? 
come on, man. I'm ready. I'm ready for a Radiohead tour. I'm ready for a Radiohead movie. I'm ready for a Radiohead record. Another movie. That OK Computer Touring movie was great. Oh, man. A little hit off my spin drift. Yeah. Mm. By the way, this episode is brought to you by Migos Food. The best dog food on the planet. If you live in Los Angeles, they will deliver the food to your house. Or you can get it at Air One or Healthy Spot. It is human-grade food made in Malibu, California. Gertie absolutely loves it. It is, uh, it, it is perfect. No sawdust. None of that bullshit kibble. It, they got chicken, beef. What else? They got salmon. They got a, a, a puppy mix. Unbelievable. MigosDog.com. Get your dog on a healthy, healthy food. I'm telling you. You do not want your dog to uh, die young. Die young. Die young. Oh, man. Anyway, me, Migos Dog with a little Black Sabbath Dio era in there. MigosDog.com. Follow them on Instagram. Also, Banker Guitars. Get yourself a boutique guitar. Follow Banker Guitars on Instagram. Tell Matt I sent you. Get on the list, get a Karina V or Explore, handmade by one man, fantastic artist, unbelievable, banker guitars. All right, so back to the show. Uh, I was at the grocery store a couple of days ago, and uh, I, I, I go during the day, and I'm in there and I see this guy walk in and he's dressed, he's dressed nice. He's like about 75, kind of looks like Clint Eastwood, uh, not Clint Eastwood now, not the 90 something year old Clint Eastwood, but like Clint, maybe when Clint was 70, you know, Clint still looked really good at 70. This guy looks like, um, I live in, 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 you know, the Valley here. So you get a lot of former actors and stuntmen and stuff that are still living around in the game. Uh, you know, maybe once in a while they do a little uh, walk on to some show playing like a uh, retired police captain or something. So this guy comes in, he's dressed up. He's got like a nice blue shirt, it's slim, looks pretty fucking good. And I saw a video of Axl Rose recently signing autographs, wearing like this blue button up and uh, some denim. This guy kind of looked like that. I was like, look at this guy. He's fucking, I'm down there in sweatpants after the gym. <laughs> you know, I got a uh, fucking Iron Maiden shirt on. Just getting my groceries real quick. All fucking sweated up. He's down there, man. He's like, I might run into some ladies. Well, I'm out grocery shopping and uh, I want to look good, which I respected. He probably threw on some uh, old school fucking cologne. What was that one shit? High karate? Might, might have put on a little high karate. <laughs> There's that one fucking uh, uh, kind of aftershave they got at the old school barbershops. It's uh, yellow. It's got like a, a dapper looking dude with a top hat as their logo. I can't remember. I don't mind the smell. It's oh, It just smells old school. You walk by like, are you wearing old school? That's what they should call it. Are you fucking wearing old school? I don't mind it. I, I never tell the guy not to put it on. Like when I used to get the mohawk cut, he would cut the mohawk and then he would throw some of that on me. I don't wear that. But for a day, I'm like a grandpa walking around. With the uh, old school, just and I can smell it. You know, I do the old fucking. Mm, I, I can smell it. <laughs> anyway, Eddie Murphy, remember that part in the tub? I can smell it. So uh, anyway, he's cruising around the store. You know, he's got his cart, just fucking cruising around. You know, looking good, slim, in shape. So 
on the way out, we're going out. This uh, grocery store has an elevator to go down to the parking garage. So I get into the elevator with him and I look down in his cart and he's got the fucking six pack of Grolsch beer. Now, I have not seen this beer since I was maybe in my early 20s. I used to drink it once in a while, thinking I was uh, luxurious. Gross. Now, if you've never seen Gross, they're beer bottles, and they have a like ceramic kind of mechanism cork. And it's on like a, a, a claw. And it's... It's amazing. No other fucking beer has this. And I hadn't seen this beer in so long. I couldn't believe it still existed. But you would undo the ceramic cork and drink the beer. And I thought to myself, these are 12 ounce beers. Who's not finishing a 12 ounce beer that you need the ceramic cork? Yeah, I'll take a couple of hits right now. Like it's tomato juice. And then cork it back up and get back to it later on <laughs> dude it, it is so weird that this beer is still around because i i i hadn't seen it in years it's like the, all those old school brands you think about like Michelob and and lowenbrow and these old beers that you just don't see lowenbrow i hate it had that aluminum foil around it you might get a little bit in your mouth if you had those uh those fillings like I had, oh, they would light up your mouth. A little aluminum foil in your mouth was a fucking, oh, it was awful. It just like, it would light up your fucking mouth. One speck of aluminum. Anyway, the old man's got the fucking gross. And I looked down, I'm like, gross. He goes, oh, yeah. <laughs> just like, a, oh, yeah. And I couldn't believe how many memories were coming out of my mind. And then I started thinking about the money that those ceramic corks must have cost, still cost to make. And is anybody using them? I mean, you open the beer, you drink it, you fucking throw it away. All that money on that cork, but it's their look. It's their fucking thing. Nobody else has the cork. I couldn't believe it actually to see it. And then I was just picturing that guy home at his house, maybe in like the studio city Hills sitting around the pool, uncorking a grosh, you know, just living the fucking life or, or maybe not. Maybe he's just in a fucking studio apartment that smells like old fucking, uh, Paul mall cigarettes He's got brown shag carpet. The Grolsch is all his only luxury. That's another thing. Old school cigarettes. When I was young, my mom would send me down to the store to get cigarettes with a note. Uh, I, I authorize the okay for my son to buy cigarettes for me, please. Like what? And the store, you'd give it to the store. I used to go to Lucky. That was the name of the grocery store. And they would read it and go, okay, and fucking sell you the cigarettes with the note. Oh, my God. What are you doing over there, Gertie? Anyway, there's old school cigarette brands, and, and I don't think they're around anymore. And so I was looking them up last night. More, M-O-R-E, more, those cigarettes. Just what a crazy name. I need more cancer. Let me get some more cancer, please. <laughs> Fucking more. Merit, another cigarette. These are all I would see. I used to smoke. It was so weird. I smoked uh, Marlboro Reds forever. And then I switched to American Spirits towards the end. And then for a couple of years, I smoked about 4 billion Lucky Strikes because uh, they would sponsor these concerts and I'd just take home cases. Anyway, Chesterfield. Kent, you would just look up. You're looking, there's Marlboro, and there'd be like 40 cigarette brands. Insane. Winston. I met a guy named Winston yesterday. I was like, like the cigarette? And he's like, no, Churchill. <laughs> Hilarious. I, I Immediately that came to me, like the cigarette? 
the white trash in me coming out. But yeah, man, crazy old brands. Kent, um, my mom was oh, Virginia Slims. Fucking wild, man. Just to think about how there were so many different beers and uh, cigarettes back then. This is exciting content, people. I'm hitting you with the fucking memories. Memories. Anyway. Oh, and this one. Uh, Tarrington. I remember the fucking logo and everything. I had to find it. I put I put in vintage cigarettes. It was a white pack. I'll put up a photo. And then two red lines going down. And I was like, man, that's some proper fucking design right there. The mid-century minimalist in me. I was like, God, that, look at that. Tarrington. Charcoal filtered king size. That's what it said on the pack. Oh, my God. Anyway. Uh, so hats off to that dude drinking his girl somewhere on a hot Monday in Los Angeles. Uh, you know, on this, uh, the 7th. I just saw the date. 7th of August. Blazing by. The years are blazing by. I'm going to be on the road. Oh, I just got some La Jolla Comedy Store headlining dates. September 8, 9, and 10, by the way. So if you're down there, come on out. I got a bunch of new material. Uh, Macy Isaacs is going to feature for me. I'll be bringing some merch, some tree hoodies, and uh, stuff like that. And tree hats, girdy hoodies, all that stuff. Anyway, I was uh, going through the Instagram, which I do for about six hours a day. It's a fucking, the worst addiction I have. It, it, it's worse than cocaine back in the day. At least cocaine, you'd run out and you'd be like, I'm out. You're not going to run out of Instagram. It's just scroll, scroll, scroll. Oh my God. The dealer is fierce. Unlimited scroll. Anyway, I was going through. And I saw a new Wawa pedal from Dunlap. Shout out to Dunlap. They make the best fucking Wawa pedals on the planet. Hands down. They are Wawa Dunlap. Steve Goodrich, my old buddy, works there. And uh, this ain't a promo. I just love Dunlap. When I was playing guitar, they had this Wah that had a switch on the side it was a, a a dial and you could dial in five different was if you want different throws all different was are are different my favorite wall ever is the Clyde wall it's uh done by this company it's called the Clyde wall and it is fantastic but for an all around kick ass durable uh wall you're going to go with Dunlap and they had this one with the the wheel on the side and my favorite wah would be Curtis Mayfield kind of 70s R&B era of just that. You know, like a big throwing wah. And uh, I used to have this song called The 70s. Life is such a breeze in the 70s. I love this song. It was just kind of my ode to the 70s. It was like the verse was like... Uh, uh how how'd the verse go? Uh I got a mustache, sideburns, and a parted on the side. Eagles in the A-track player singing about one of these nights. And as they keep score of the gas wars with the odd and even plates, we keep ourselves real busy talking about Watergate. <laughs> Oh, I was so proud of that verse. I loved it. I got a mustache, sideburns, and I parted on the side. Everybody in the 70s parted their hair on the side. Um, and uh, Eagles in the A-track player singing about one of these nights. And as we keep score of the gas wars with the odd and even plates, back then, 
there was these uh, gas wars and you could only get gas every other day. And it mattered what your license plate last number was, odd or even. And then, of course, Watergate. We keep ourselves real busy talking about Watergate. And it was really um, inspired by the Mother Hips song, Lady Be Cool. I thought, I need a tune that's just fucking got this great kind of fucking groove that people could just fucking get into, chill for a few, you know? And uh, I, I wanted the best 70s type of wall for that. Just a wah, 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 you know? And I loved Curtis Mayfield. I still fucking love Curtis Mayfield. I think Curtis Mayfield is one of the greatest of all fucking time. Of all time. I never got to see him. He died. What a freak show accident. The lighting rig fell down on him. And then uh, he was paralyzed for years. And then I think he died. Uh, I think he became. Uh, now, I, I don't even want to speculate on this. But I do know this. Uh, the lighting rig fell on him. And he became paralyzed and didn't play ever again. Just fucking horrific. But Curtis Mayfield is one of the greatest ever. The guy played mean guitar. He had the best voice and he wrote the sickest, slick, 70s, beautiful tunes. Anyway, so my whole thing about The Wall, I've loved The Wall forever. A lot of people give Kirk Hammett shit about The Wall. No, Kirk Hammett has made The Wall him, like Hendrix. Hendrix was a wall guy. Kirk Hammett is a wah guy and he's fucking great on it, man. It's musical. It's just beautiful. So I'm scrolling through Instagram and I notice a new wah pedal out. It's blue. Now I love blue shit. I love blue shit and I love green shit, you know, and I love effects pedals that have wacky paint jobs. There was this one company that had all these weird splattered paint jobs and stuff. So I look right away and I go, oh, a new wah. And I, I noticed it's the Akiri, Akira Takasaki model. Now you're going, what the fuck is Akira Takasaki? And I fucking exactly, uh, that's my point. I know who he is. And I think there's a small group of people. But this guy, to, this deep in his career to have his own wall pedal kind of blew me away. I was like, wow. Now, this guy was a legend when I was growing up. He played in a band called Loudness. He still does play in a band called Loudness. Uh, humongous in Japan. Got big in the States, a little bit big, with a record called, um, what was it? Thunder in the East. And I saw him at Wolfgang's. And he was known as the Japanese Eddie Van Halen. Kind of like that guy I turned you on to. A couple of weeks ago, Mr. Jimmy, the Japanese Jimmy Page. It's so funny to think about. We got the Japanese Jimmy Page. We got the Japanese Eddie Van Halen. But he was known as the Japanese Eddie Van Halen. He had the star guitar with the uh, ESP uh, headstock that was, looked like the old Dan Electro, like Eddie Van Halen had on his star guitar from the Fair Warning Tour. The black with the white squigglies. And I started thinking, I go, wait a minute, like there's only maybe a, a core of like 5,000 people that know, you know, still remember who he is and stuff. I'm 57. So that was back in, I don't know, the 80s. And I really liked the band, the one record. They had, they had two records and they would open for a lot of people like Dio and stuff. But they never got really big. But the one record, Thunder in the East, was uh, a culty kind of thing. And, 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 and most of it was from the reputation of this Japanese Eddie Van Halen, Akira Takasaki. I went and listened to the record last night, and it didn't really hold up for me. I hadn't heard it in years, and I loved it for years. I always talked about it like, oh, yeah, loudness, Thunder in the East, you know? Um, let me look at the, the, the songs real quick. You got, uh, they had the, the, the video was rock and roll crazy nights. 
We are the lost of guys. <laughs> Uh, but they had a song like hell that was great like hell like hell <clears throat> it came out in 1985 so that's when it was so my point is back in 1985 this guy was uh kind of a star and but here he is with his own wah pedal now in in 2023 i was like this is fucking wild and, and good for him man Good for him, cruising around with his own fucking wah pedal, you know? And and for all I know, uh, maybe he's done something recently and I just haven't uh, kept track of it. And I'm sure he's still giant in, uh, in Japan. There's guys in Japan that are fucking giant. Mr. Big, they do like 20 nights at Budokan. Mr. Big out touring again, by the way. Eric Martin, my old good buddy, Paul Gilbert. Billy Sheehan, Billy Sheehan and Eric Martin have done the podcast. If you have not heard those, they were years and years ago. And a couple of my favorite episodes really liked talking to Billy. He had a fucking insane collection of bootlegs and Eric Martin, one of the greatest Bay area singers, King R and B speaking of R and B guy could his EMB Eric Martin band record, solo record, sucker for a pretty face. Fantastic record i never really got into mr big really because uh i just loved eric for his r&b and i loved billy in um in david lee roth and paul gilbert's just a fucking smoker if you didn't hear that paul gilbert dio record that's pretty interesting i ran into bruce bouye my good buddy from racer x who also played with uh paul gilbert back in the day i ran into him in vegas Still trying to get him in the podcast. The guy fucking just won't do it. There's these guys that cannot get behind a mic. John Sykes, who knows where the fuck he is, never does interviews. There's guys out there. I'm trying to get right now. Um, I'm trying to get, first of all, oh, I got to tell you this. Uh, uh, Tatum O'Neill started following me on Instagram. Now, I am dying to talk to Tatum O'Neill. She was recently on the cover of uh, People Magazine. And if you guys uh, follow uh, my Instagram, start hitting her up on the Instagram. Go, hey, you really should do Dean Del Rey's podcast. It's Tatum underscore O'Neill, T-A-T-U-M. Don't be rude, though. But, you know, she's a fucking legend, Tatum O'Neill. Bad News Bears, Paper Moon. Little darlings. I I mean, she fucking wins an Academy Award at fucking like eight years old or something. A goddamn legend. And between her and uh, Kelly Leak on Bad News Bears, it's just some of the greatest teen acting and teen movie of all time. Bad News Bears. Oh, my God. Anyway, she's been following me, and I've died to fucking have her on. What a fucking life she had. Still has, you know? She's had it rough. Big story in the People magazine. i got to get her on, you know? It would be fucking great to talk to Tatum O'Neill. Paper Moon. Oh, man. Uh, some shout-outs to some new Patreons. Let's get them here. Uh, hold on. And if you want to join the Patreon, patreon.com slash Dean Del Rey. Lots of uh, bonus episodes, a zillion of them. And uh, also there'll be a new grail this week. All right, new Patreoners. Brian Dagzuck. Thank you. Trevin Pugh. Trevin Pugh. Derek Barnes. Henrik Nordveg. Awesome. Daniel Roberts. These are the new Patreoners. Thank you so much for joining up, man. I really appreciate it. I've been trying my best to do a lot of kick-ass solo episodes on there, bonus ones, and uh, doing the Zooms. I'm going to do a Zoom this week, a live Zoom with the Patreoners, maybe tonight. I might do that tonight. And then there will be a new Grail. The Grail is back going. 
the grail podcast and uh yeah man anyway come on out to the shows come see me um comedy store i got some bill bird dates coming up i will be doing the uh, flyover comedy festival in cincinnati i think that is i will be doing utah boxcar comedy some shows and i really appreciate all you guys out there i feel like i'm kind of uh getting my head out of the fog a little bit i've been fucking working out like a madman eating clean and you know that bomb that oppenheimer size bomb a couple nights ago really kind of woke me up <laughs> anyway candles are lit my friends i love all you guys thanks for uh tuning in and see you soon